Hello, Fusion. Welcome to church. God bless you real good. How was your week? I hope you've been following the series Wise Choices and you are following it keenly for the transformation of your life. Oh, our friends all over the world, welcome to our church. We're glad you join us. And if today is your first time, please just head to the chat room. We want to hear from you. We will quickly reach out to you once we hear from you. God bless you real good in the name of Jesus. Join us as we sing praise and worship to our God. And I'll be right back in just a few moments. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.
call the name of Jesus over that situation. I don't know what it is, but I know that we bow before him.
Welcome back. Wasn't that beautiful? Thank God for life. We're grateful to God for all the beautiful things, all the blessings He has bestowed on us. We cannot pay Him. We have no, nothing to give Him than the fruit of our lips, the fruit of our worship, of our thanksgiving. Praise the name of the Lord. So we've been discussing um, from last week on the series, White Choices, yeah? Last week, we talked about uh, lying. Ah, lying is not good. Praise God. And today we're going to talk about engaging the Bible. Oh, I love the Bible. One of the books that has helped my life ever since is the Bible. The Bible is my companion. For you to know about Jesus Christ, the transforming Lord, you need to make your Bible your friend. So, as usual, we have our friends from Switch. They're going to take over from me right now, and I'll be back to round up. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. So what's up, guys? I am Jess. Woo! I'm Jess, and I'm on the YouVersion Bible app team. The YouVersion Bible app is an app that Life Church has created to give the Bible away for free. Many of you probably have it and you use it regularly. Maybe you have like a Bible that you open and you use as you journal. Maybe you have a Bible, but you don't use it very often. Or maybe you don't have the Bible at all. And uh, maybe you don't even really believe in it. And I get that. You know, growing up, my mom, she went to church and read the Bible every day, and she would bring me to church with her, but my dad, he didn't go to church. He thought that the Bible was lame and outdated. So I would go to church with her, and I would learn that the Bible was important and that I should memorize it, but it didn't have any impact on my life. I mean, I still drank, smoked, lied to my parents. It really didn't feel like the Bible would impact how I lived, even though I was learning about it. But then I got bullied at school. And I mean, kids would throw things at me on the bus and they would call me these horrible names. And I can remember a time when I could hear girls in the hallway in between classes talk bad about me. I remember feeling so misunderstood and alone. Then I remember these scriptures that I learned at church that told me that Jesus loved me and that He accepted me, how He knew everything about me and still wanted to have a relationship with me. So I started to read the Bible, and that's when it became far more than just some book I learned at church. It gave me hope. Can you relate to any of that? I mean, have you ever felt alone or misunderstood or hopeless? Or maybe things have been great for you, but do you feel like you wanna know more about your purpose? and why you're here on earth, and do you want your life to make a difference? Well, if you've said yes to any of that, you need a relationship with Jesus, and we get to know Him by reading His Word. 
So there's a guy, his name is Paul, and he was so excited about this faith that he had in Jesus that he would write letters to his friends and to churches to encourage them in their faith. And he wrote a couple letters to his friend Timothy. And in one of them, it says, all scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we're wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. We need a relationship with Jesus and we get to know him by reading his word. Okay, so let me break this down for you. So the Bible was inspired by God, but written by people. And it covers all different writing styles. So some of it is history, like real events that took place. Some of it is poems and stories and stuff. Some of it is advice, like how to make a good decision or ways to live without regret. And some of it is journals from people who actually walked with Jesus or experts at the time who recorded his life, like what he did, what he said, and what he said he would do. And the people closest to him saw him feed thousands of people from a kid's lunch bring people from the dead, help people walk on water and stop a storm. And then they saw him die and get buried and then raise from the dead. Like they helped bury him and then he showed up at their house. And not just a couple people that were all in the same room, but hundreds of people that were unrelated to each other claim that Jesus visited them after he died. This is so crucial because Jesus isn't some dead guy. If he were, then this would just be a book that we wouldn't be talking about today, but his body is gone. And one of the really crazy important things about the Bible is that the people closest to him, including his brother, were willing to be killed to write down his life and what he said. People were willing to be killed so that you and I can read it. The Bible also reveals two really important things about you and me. It shows us how far we are from God, and it also shows us God's passionate love for us. There are some parts of it that might not be as practical to your life as others, that's okay. Some of it might be hard to read or understand. The point in reading the Bible is for you to have a relationship with God and get to know Him the same way that He knows you. And there are times where you might not feel like reading the Bible, but if you choose to read it, even when you don't feel like it, you're opening yourself up to God. But here's the deal, don't wait to read the Bible until you feel it, read it so you feel it. Don't wait to read the Bible until you feel it, read it so you feel it. When we dig into the Bible, we get more and more connected to the truth that the Bible brings. It can help you stop believing what others say about you or maybe negative things that you're saying about yourself. So I can't stress this enough, don't wait to read the Bible until you feel it, read it so you feel it. And I can't think of a better example of somebody who was transformed by God and uses the Bible every day to grow in her faith than my friend Laura. So she's one of the girls in my switch group and the Bible has totally changed the way that she thinks and the way that she lives. Okay, then this is where I feel like Laura's interview comes in. Laura, you have such a cool story. So what parts of your life do you think have like really changed? Like reading the Bible, like how has it changed the way that you yeah. live? I didn't start my relationship with God until I was a junior in high school. I grew up going to church for holidays mm -hmm. and like Sunday school sure. and stuff, but yeah. I didn't really understand any of it. And as I got older, we just stopped going entirely after my parents got divorced. And I was just wow. like a mess. I didn't know how to handle all of it. I was under a lot of stress. And so I started making bad decisions. Mm -hmm. I started hanging out with the wrong crowd. I only cared about like my clothes looking nice and dating the right guys oh, yeah. and hanging around the popular girls or whatever. I was drinking and lying to my parents and stealing and all of this stuff. Wow. But none of it ever helped. I just felt even more sad and depressed each day. Um, and then I went to a camp in the summer and they told the story of Jesus dying on the cross. And there are all these kids around me who are emotional and crying and they were just like jumping and praising God. And I was like freaked out by all of it. I just didn't like, I was like, what's happening? But like, yeah. I felt it too, but I just wasn't sure how to like show it. So yeah. I was just sitting there kind of looking down and, um, the preacher who's like, if anyone wants to give their life to Christ, stand up right now. And for like a minute, everyone was just kind of looking around at each other. Then finally one girl stood up and I was like, okay, I can do this. I'm going to stand up. And I just kept sitting down though. I didn't stand <laughs> up. And then more people stood up and then I was just like, okay, I need to do this. And so I stood up and it was so new to me, but I just felt so different so quickly. And wow. I haven't been the same since. So 
And how have you changed? I started getting rid of like bad relationships and, you know, I was going to church obviously on Mm -hmm. Sundays with the family and then I was going to switch, but they're like, all those, those things are all good. There's something that's way more important. I didn't know God intimately yet. And I think that was a big like, um, gap in my relationship with him. So I started reading my Bible um, every morning. I just pull it up on version. I don't even get out of bed. It just, it changed me so much because I got to know who God is and what he says about me. Like sometimes I would not feel forgiven for all of the things that I've done because something would come up that would just trigger all these past memories. Mm -hmm. But just through reading scripture, I know that he's forgiven me and he's still forgiving me every single day. So, um, just by reading scripture and over and over and just keeping that in my heart and memorizing that, um, it really helps me. That's so powerful. So do you have any specific verses on like what helps you remember God's forgiveness or His grace? Uh, yes, I, I do. And First John uh, 1, um, it says in verse 9, but if we confess our sins to Him, He is faithful and just to forgive us yeah. of our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. Just by reading that, it yeah. just reminds me, you know, He's always going to forgive me. He's yeah. always going to be faithful towards me. Wow. So, Yeah, there were times where I felt really alone in my own life. Mm-hmm. And so passages of Scripture like this, Romans 8, uh, 38 and 39, it says, For I'm convinced that neither life nor death nor angels nor demons nor things present nor the future nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God Mm -hmm. that's in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that's so comforting, you know, because I felt so empty and Mm -hmm. alone and misunderstood. And this is saying like, God's there, you know? So tell me, what does that look like? On a day that you don't feel like reading the Bible, what do you do? I have those days all the time. Sure. Um, But then I just remember like, everything that God has done for me and everything that He's doing for me now and tomorrow and for the rest of my life. And I go through Bible plans um, on the YouVersion app, and uh, I set daily reminders. So every single day, it reminds me, like, don't forget to read your plan. And also, I have um, friends that will keep me on track, you know, and we'll do Bible plans together and memorize Scripture together. So I have lots of people who are holding me accountable, too. So cool. So you need a relationship with Jesus and you get to know Him by reading His Word. But one of the ways to help the Bible become more real in your life is when you're able to talk about the Bible and what you're learning with other people who are also learning and growing in their relationship with God. In fact, the Bible says that when we connect together for where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. He loves when we connect with Him and connect with each other by talking about what He says. So there's a feature in the app, it's called Plans with Friends, and it allows for you to subscribe to Plans and invite others to join you. And after you read or listen or engage in the content for that day, you can text your thoughts or your questions to the people who you're doing the plan with, and you can have the conversation about what you're learning and what they're learning together. So maybe your next step is to subscribe to a plan and do it with your switch group and start the conversation, not just what you're learning on Wednesday night, but what you're learning as you get into the Bible throughout the week. So don't wait to read the Bible until you feel like it. Read it so you feel it. That's my hope for you. I know that if you read the Bible, it will inspire you, especially if you read it with others. Hey, my name is Jacob. I'm Taylor. I'm a project manager on the Uversion team. I work with Uversion as a product designer. And I'm the web developer for Uversion. And I serve at Switch. I serve at Switch. I'm a Switch leader at BNB. And so we've put together some quick tips for how to engage with your students and your friends inside the Bible app. So my tip is to explore it. I hear so many people that don't know like what the Bible app has to offer. And it's because I think sometimes they're fearful to just click around and dig. I think the tip that I would give you guys would be to become friends with your students in the app, of course. I can send a request to maybe one of my students or a co-leader. We can connect and you see what Bible plans they're reading or verses that they've highlighted. The Bible app gives you a a feed to be able to see your activity and your friend's activity. And just able to create a, a new place to have discussions around God's Word. One of the great things with the Bible app is that we have reading plans about just about every topic. We've got 
categories like love, anxiety, healing, anger. Our students are dealing with all of these topics, uh, so we can come up with plans that are uh, really similar to what they're interested in. You can also scroll almost all the way down to the bottom, and there's a category called youth, and that's where our Switch-specific plans live in the Bible app. We almost named it Plans with Switch Students. That's not true. Like this is a critical tool. So Plans with Friends, you invite your uh, leaders, your, your Switch students, and you do a reading plan together. Everybody is on the same day. You're all reading the same content, the same verses. You can see who's completed their reading for the day. And then also you have an opportunity at the end to kind of talk it over, ask deep questions and present thoughts and what the Holy Spirit's speaking to you about this particular plan. So to start a plan with friends, you go to the plans tab. You're gonna see the, all the plans that you're already subscribed to. Click find plans. By myself was the only option previously and now with friends is what you wanna click. You're gonna be able to pick a date and then invite all your friends. So for us, each week we get the leader's guide paper that we look on and we see what the suggested version reading plan is. And it always coincides with what we're teaching about on the on the Wednesday nights. So this last week I started a challenge with my Switch group. I told them if anybody shows up next week with a six day streak or longer, I would give them a king size candy bar. They immediately opened up the app on their phone. They were asking me, you know, where do I look to check my streak? And then I also told them if any of them shows up with a streak longer than mine, I'd buy pizza for the whole group. So that's going to also give me some accountability so that I don't miss a day because I can't let these kids beat me. I hear a lot of excuses when I talk to my students about why they don't read the Bible more. Uh, a lot of times they tell me that they just don't like reading, like they don't read books in their spare time. Uh, and that's a great time for a leader to point out that you can actually listen to the Bible. The Bible can read to you uh, using the Bible app. They might want to listen to it on the bus ride or on their way to switch. Encourage your kids to find a Bible version that has an audio version with it. I use the New Living Translation, which is pretty common English, and I really never get bored of listening to the Bible. So if your students have questions about maybe a theme or a topic or a specific uh, passage, videos is a great resource to just share those with your students. My favorite are some of the Bible Project videos that really explain clearly some of the more complicated books of the Bible. This section is just super helpful for people um, that may not know exactly where to go. But as a leader, you can go in and find scripture that relates to the message, and you can have that ready to share with your students or to text them throughout the week, an encouragement. Say a student texts you and says, man, I'm feeling anxious or depressed. You can go to the Explore tab, click on anxiety or depression, and find scripture that relates to them, and just let God's truth pour into their lives in that way. A great way to use highlights with your students would be just looking and seeing what they're highlighting. You can always comment on it or encourage them, talk about it at Switch that week. If you're a leader and your kids don't have a smartphone, you say you're, you're talking about downloading the app and they say, well, I don't even have a smartphone. My parents don't let me have a smartphone. What can I do? All of the features for uh, the Uversion app are also available on Bible.com. You can go in there and log in with your user account and have access to the same highlights, bookmarks, uh, plans with friends. So when you send out an invite to your students, as long as they have internet access, they can get to it. Other great features would be just um, simple things like the ability to highlight a verse that's really speaking to you or write a note about it and share it through a text message or a verse image um, with those that are in your inner circle. Welcome back. Yes, wasn't that beautiful? It was beautiful. I love the topic. Bible engagement. You need to engage your Bible. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible is a transforming book. I love the Bible. It's a beautiful book. There's no book like the Bible in the whole world. The Bible, just reading your your Bible. You know, recently I, I, I read, I took time to study the book of Ecclesiastes, you know, and that humbles me a lot. You know, where he said, whether you are, but there's, let me, I'm paraphrasing now, whether you are a, a rich man or a poor man, you will die. I read it and I got a different revelation, you know. You know, 
uh, people tend to take about uh, one part as a vanity upon vanity. All is vanity, you know. I, I, that, that calmed me down, you know. <laughs> I got I got some revelation, deep revelation that I can't explain. It was personal, you know. That, you know, we we, we human beings. We're not too careful. We chase, we're chasing after shadows, not the real thing. I know what the real thing is. Jesus is the real thing. God is the real thing. Praise the name of the Lord. Chase after him. Huh? He said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing shall be added unto you. You know, so we need to get, get it right. My, my, my prayer every now and then that God will help us to get it right. It's very good if you, if, if you, if you get it right as a, at, at a young age, man, I kid you not, your life will be so extraordinary. You become very, very influential. You become somebody that is going to impact this world positively. My earnest prayer unto you listening to me right now, that God in his power, God in his mercy, will reveal himself more and more unto you in the name of Jesus. It's a good thing to have fellowship with God. It's a good thing to get it right, you know, at a tender age. It's not too early to begin to do exploit, you know, begin to do great things. God will give you the wisdom in the name of Jesus. God will open your eyes to the deep things of life. Even as you take our time to read your Bible, to study your Bible, I pray in the name of Jesus that you become a person of understanding, that your eyes of understanding will be open in the name of Jesus, that you become wise, very wise. You know, Solomon was a very wise king, and today we'll read about Solomon. People will read about you too in the name of Jesus, that God will give you that wisdom that is not common, you know. And I'm praying especially for Africans, there's something we're lacking that I've noticed, leadership. God's going to give you wisdom. Even as you study the Bible, God's going to give you wisdom for leadership in the name of Jesus. God is going to open your eyes of understanding. You're not going to live an ordinary life in Jesus' name. God is going to raise you up and going to do great things for the kingdom in Jesus' name. Father, thank you. I give you glory. I give you honor for the, for the Bible. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Because the Bible is transforming lives all over the world. And the Bible is going to transform the lives of this young one also in the name of Jesus. Even as they've decided today to make your word their friend, Father, in the name of Jesus. Give them the wisdom. Give them the strength they need to continue studying and reading your word in the name of Jesus. Their lives will never be cut short in the name of Jesus. These ones will live to fulfill the number of their days in the name of Jesus. I pray for long life upon them in the name of Jesus. As a day of a tree, ah, so shall the, their days be. As their days be, so shall their strength be in the name of Jesus. Turn every wilderness into a fruitful field for them and let that fruitful field be counted for a forest in the name of Jesus. Cover them with your holy presence. Father, guide and protect them in the name of Jesus. Lord, I give you glory. I give you honor. For in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Until I come your way again, I love you. Stay blessed and stay out of trouble. God bless you real good in Jesus' name. Amen. Before we go, let's say our every Sunday confession. It shouldn't be every Sunday confession. It should be our daily confession. Every day you wake up, you tell yourself, I am blessed. Praise God. I am prosperous. I am talented. I am creative. I am forgiven. I am redeemed. I am free. Say, I am valuable. I am anointed. Amen. I am equipped. God has equipped us. Amen. I am beautiful. Say that to yourself. I am beautiful. Amen. You are beautiful in Jesus' name. Say, I am attractive. Made you attractive in Jesus' name. I am amazing. I love this one. I am amazing. I am fearfully and wonderfully 
made, child of God, say it like you mean it. I am a child of the Most High God. Praise the name of the Lord. I have seeds of greatness. I have seeds of greatness on the inside of me. I'll become all he has created me to be. I will become all God has created me to be in the mighty name of Jesus. I am victorious. We are victorious in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a victorious week, my friends, in Jesus' name. God bless you and keep you. God make his face shine over you and give you peace in the name of Jesus. You will excel in this life in the name of Jesus. You shall be called blessed. Blessed are you in your going out. Blessed are you in your coming in in the name of Jesus. You will know the truth and the Bible says if you know the truth, the truth shall set you free. You are free indeed in the name of Jesus. No weapon fashion form against you shall prosper in the name of Jesus. The hand of God rests upon you. Uh, you shall flourish like cedar in Lebanon in the name of Jesus. Your life will not be cut short. You will live to fulfill your days and your assignment amen in this life in the name of Jesus. Thank you God for answering our prayers. I pray all this over your life in the mighty name of Jesus and everyone say amen. God bless you real good.